Good morning, and Happy. welcome to the show. Happy Monday, everybody. Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to the show. Today, we're going to talk about how to get better results faster. faster. If I was to tell you that you could get better results faster, would you like that? Mm. No. Said nobody ever. Exactly right. If you knew that you could get better results faster, wouldn't you like that? Give Everybody us an, wants that. Give us an amen, hallelujah, drop an emoji hallelujah. to describe how you feel about it. And just so you know, hallelujah does end with an R. Does end with an R. Mm -hmm. It's the correct spelling. I've won zero spelling bees, but that's how that works. I will not put you in a spelling bee contest. Boogie has wanted to show up. You should have seen him a minute ago. Oh my gosh. He is, he got wasted at Dog he Beach He got wasted yesterday. with his homies at Dog Beach. He does, he cannot even get up today. Don't and even he, want to. And he apologizes, but he's doing his best. And right now he's playing with his he's, friend, he's Zebra. He's taking care of Zebra. Yeah. <laughs> he's taking care of Zebra, who was also wasted at Dog Beach. <laughs> Boogie and friends. Okay, but... <laughs> it is it is Monday, so we're going to be talking about mindset-related stuff. Look, if you want to be successful... You gotta want it. You gotta want it. There's no doubt about it. What does that mean? Everybody wants things. Why don't they achieve them? Because they don't really... They live in the it would be nice land. It would be nice. A full I description think... of, of how you want something is basically what are you willing to sacrifice? in order to get there. You know how committed somebody is to getting somewhere, achieving something based off of their level of sacrifice. Mm. So mm. when somebody tells me I want to achieve something, the first thing I will ask them is, okay, what are you willing to give up? I think that it would be nice is the place where the idea of having something appeals to us, but we don't necessarily believe we can achieve it. That would be nice. Like, it's not for me. Like, there's no way I can achieve it. It's a disbelief in self, I think. Mm -hmm. Or ability based off of circumstances. Which is not a reason to not get what you want. So, remember, what you say doesn't matter. Actions will always speak louder than words. Can I read something that was in my gratitude journal today? Sure. A thousand words will not leave so deep an impression as one deed. Amen to that. A thousand words will not leave so deep an impression as one deed. So it doesn't matter what you say. What matters is what you do because actions speak way louder than words. So saying that whatever your goal is right now, you should know what your goal is. For one, if you don't know what your goal is, you're never going to get there. Start there. Start right. there. For two, you have to get real with yourself by, by asking, what am I willing to give up? Because your actions will dictate what you will end up achieving. Your actions will dictate your reality. Okay? So, as far as sacrifice goes, remember, we talked about this before. There's three sources that we have. And if you know what they are, then drop a comment and tell us what they are. But the three resources are time, energy, money. You're not, if, if anybody who tells me I don't have time, that's it. You, you, you're already blocked. Unless you're telling me, I'm limited with time, but I need help. 
It's a okay, very different cool. mindset. Then, then now, then now we're getting real with ourselves about it. We know that we need to sacrifice more time. We're willing to sacrifice more time, but we don't really have a plan. We don't know how to make it happen. We recognize that the time is limited, but unsure of how to make it work with that limited time. And it, it's all the mindset, right? So I mindset Monday, and it's a matter of, it's just the difference. Instead of saying, I can't, it's how can I? And if you want something bad enough, you will find a way. And we say this all the time, like you can go Google, like fire up the old Google machine and look up like miraculous, um, like mom saves child. I bet you will find a bunch of videos of moms doing super fucking freaky human things or, or non-human abilities that they somehow tap into to save their child. When you want something bad enough, you will find a GD way. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds me of a story that um, once, once upon a time when I used to go to the church and actually sit in the pews and like um, there was a baby underneath, a, underneath one of them on the end right on the end and like the little, what's the thing called? The, 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 the thing you carry. I'm not a mom yet. Gosh. Anyways, it was underneath. The baby was in it. The bench broke people sitting on it. And this dad like grabbed the end of the bench and lifted it with all the people sitting on it. So it wouldn't crush his baby. Wow. Like you find superhuman abilities when you truly want something bad enough. And uh, a car seat, yes, but it, then you take it out. Okay, is it still called a car seat if it's not in a car? Then is it just a baby seat? I know there's a booster seat. Sarit needs one every day when she drives. I do. She's sitting I mean, on one right now. Yep. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just give myself a little boost right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, the, the, the point of all of that is there is no excuse. There are circumstances that are unavoidable and there are things that happen outside of our control. But the truth and the bottom line still remains that when you want something bad enough, you will do everything in your power or outside of your own power mm -hmm. to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So time... That's one of our resources. Mm -hmm. Energy is the other one. And, and it, you know, so, so many things go under the energy umbrella, like in, in a weight loss world. Mm -hmm. Going to the grocery store. Any action. Any action that you do. Uh, logging in your food. Meal planning. Working out. That's all energy. Mm -hmm. What whatever it is that you do or don't do is energy. And by the way, things that you don't do cost you energy too. It just costs you negative energy. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> Mind blowing. And money. Remember something that we we've spoken a lot about last week when we were promoting the raw transformation is that money is a symbol of seriousness. To you, mm -hmm. to you and nobody else. Because when you're not financially invested in something, you're not going to show up. Why bother making a small sacrifice when you don't feel like it? Like why bother make like an extra serving of baked carrots? And I know it's random that I'm saying like baked carrots out of nowhere. You know, when meal prepping, if you're not willing to go out of your way to invest in yourself, once you've made an investment in yourself, then it's like, oh shit, it's like now I've got some to lose if I don't show up. Yeah, and it's possible, right? Like, it's possible to, it's possible to reach the results that you want with little financial investment um, 
but the more resources you put into anything, the more you should get out of it as long as you show up for it. Yeah. So you talked about time, you talked about energy, you talked about money. Mm -hmm. These are resources. I want to talk about other things that are required and other things that you maybe need to sacrifice. Did you have this on your thing too? Well, I, I, had, I had four main points, but please go for it. This is really the Sarit show and I just interrupt. So um, hopefully with value. Um, but you also are going to have to, I'm going to start with comfort because comfort's a funny thing. Um, I would say you have to sacrifice comfort, but if you're not where you want to be, you're already uncomfortable. So you just have to choose what kind of discomfort yeah. you're willing to face. I always struggle with this, like, oh, get uncomfortable. Like no matter what, if you're not reaching your potential, you're not comfortable already. Mm-hmm. It's just that you have to change the direction of discomfort and change is weird for people. So when you are driving this ship and you've been like off course, you know, and you're cruising and you've got momentum going the direction you don't want to be going and you've got to turn the ship around, it takes a different kind of discomfort and a different kind of effort mm -hmm. and a different kind of energy, but it's positive energy. So it requires you to get uncomfortable, but in a different way. Um, it requires you to push through times that you, when you don't feel like doing something that you know you need to do, it requires a building of discipline. Uh, it requires you overcoming doubts or disbelief in yourself. It involves you overcoming disappointments that you have when you step on the scale and the number didn't go down as much as you wanted it to or it expected it to or hoped it would. All of these things are just adversities. Mm -hmm. And anytime you're climbing, you're going against the current and you will meet adversities 100% without a shadow of a doubt. You will meet adversities. And it's how mentally resilient are you to push through and past each of these obstacles, if you will. Okay, back to you. Life is hard. You just have to choose what hard you're willing to face. For, for example, for anybody who didn't watch our live on Saturday, I got like super vulnerable and extremely emotional. I was just extremely overwhelmed by how you guys have shown up and I'm, I'm so incredibly proud of you. I think I cried five times that day. Oh my gosh, that day was just like insane. <laughs> there was something about the 10, 10, 20, 20. I don't know what it, if it was something like. Um, what was that? <laughs> I was just taking a deep breath and stretching. But, you know, every day Aaron and I face adversities Oof, every day every day we face adversities but and we would so rather we would rather face the the bigger adversities that we're facing nowadays than this than the small adversities that we used to face you know like a couple of years ago when we were still like just personal trainers at equinox and let's say you know we had an annoying client who always showed up late. That's an adversity. Like, you know, deep down that there's somebody who's disrespecting your time and who's not showing up for themselves and they're just being a brat because they're loaded with money and it doesn't matter how much money they spend on a personal training session, they still don't respect your time. That's an adversity, feeling disrespected every day. But I'm like, you know what? I'd rather sacrifice a comfortable job, all this security for the sake of the greater good. And every day, like it's an uphill battle, but you know what? It's so rewarding because we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. We're making a massive mm -hmm. impact. Look, it's like not even 7 a.m. and we're already like making a positive impact on 69 people. Lucky it's number just... 69. It's amazing. Wow, wow. Right, I'm a so child. It's okay. So you have to choose you have to choose what kind of discomfort 
you're facing. And today's not money conversation, but hey, weight loss, money, like, look, it's all just life conversations, really. Like, weight loss, what is weight loss? That's, that's problem solving. Earning more money, that's problem solving. That's what life is all about. It's all about problem solving. You don't want to ask for less problems. You want to have the tools that you need and learn the skills that you need and have the right support system in order to solve the problems that you're facing. Every day is a day of problem solving. Some days the problems are just bigger than others. Yeah. And guess what? The more times you solve problems, the better you get at it. The yeah. more times you recognize something is a problem rather than making an excuse for something happened to you, then the sooner you can overcome the problem, find the solution and move past it. And the more you face adversities head on, having courage, adversities bring about a fear. Uh, I think of, of failure, of lack of control, of um, self-doubt, of um, criticism, of whatever the adversity is, um, failure, um, negative self-talk, all adversities that when you learn to overcome time and time again, Sergeant is like, yeah, mama, preach. Um, when you learn to overcome them time and time again, they're not as daunting over time. And that's why we say get comfortable being uncomfortable because there is no such thing as comfort other than what you decide you're going to make something in your mind. It's all about the story that you tell yourself. It's all about the story that you tell yourself. Mm -hmm. So you got to sacrifice more. Right, and, there, and there's three things to sacrifice. Time, energy, money. The more you sacrifice, the better the outcome. Always, 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 always. You have to increase your consistency. Because look, this is, this is a game of consistency. For anybody who thinks that their life is gonna change in 21 days, or in 90 days, or in 180 days, look, your life is changing on a daily basis. And you might not see it in front of the mirror every single day, but you have to see it in your mind first. If you're in the inner circle, your life will change in 90 days. Yes, <laughs> some, sometimes even before that, but- You don't even know what you're capable of. But for somebody like Crystal, for example, her life changed in 90 days, but her life keeps on changing every single day. It doesn't change overnight. And that's the perception that people have that when I lose 20 pounds, blah, blah, blah. No, your life is changing every day. Like when you say no to, let's say a, a piece of pizza that you're used to saying pizza, yes pizza. to all the time, your life is changing. You're becoming a more disciplined individual who's living more intentionally and eats pizza when it's the right time, not just because it's in front of you. That is you changing your life. However, in this stupid fucking industry that we are going to take over and we are taking over people have this perception that their life is changing only when they see the after photo look the after photo is happening every single day every day is an after photo it's an after photo it, your after photo today is a reflection of everything that you did until today so your after photo 100, year, 100 days from now is going to be a reflection of everything that you did up till today plus the last 100 days. So the more consistent you are on a day-to-day -day basis, the more change you're going to see in the after photo. This time he's singing Seal. Kiss by a kiss rose. By a rose. You hear it? Finished. So this is a game of consistency and change is happening every day. And 
this is to call out some people who are like, oh, the scale didn't move over the last four weeks and I've been good. Look, that, that just goes to show that you're, you're unexperienced yet with the right perception. And that's okay. Wait, so if they say what you said is an observation, the next step in what they do with that observation is what will take you forward or set you back. Yes. So you said, oh, I got on a scale and I didn't, I didn't lose. What did you say? I didn't lose any weight. I got on the scale and I didn't lose any I weight over lose the any last weight. four weeks. Over Freaking four out. Weeks. So, I mean, so on one side of that coin, we'll call it this side, you have worked really hard for four weeks and you, you feel like you've really done the right things. And so you have an expectation understandably, mm -hmm. that the number on the scale will go down. Mm -hmm. And when you step on the scale, it's very easy to be disappointed knowing, man, I did everything. Like, And to think that what you're doing is not working and then to become defeated. There's the other side of that where you step on the scale after four weeks and you know all the same circumstances apply when you get on the scale and you observe and you say, oh shit, well, I didn't lose any weight, but I mean, and then you rationalize logically. I did everything that I was supposed to do. Now, if you are being coached by somebody, that's when you go to that coach and you say, hey, you know, and you bring them your observation, hmm. remaining neutral about it. If you're working with a coach, if you're not working with a coach, there might be a lot of blind spots. There probably are a shit ton of blind spots that you don't hmm. know about and eating healthy does not make you 250 pounds. Eating healthy means that you, sh you don't have 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds to lose mm -hmm. if you are eating healthy. So if, if you're eating healthy and you have that much weight that you wanna lose, this is totally just a tangent and I'm okay with it. That means that your idea of eating healthy is not the right idea of eating healthy. Mm -hmm. You've been skewed or persuaded or convinced by the marketing of the food industry to think that you're eating healthy. And that's a massive blind spot that like I would say 90% of the women struggling to lose weight have. There are a percentage of people who have hormonal issues or you know autoimmune things that make it more difficult, but do not automatically say, oh, I have a hypothyroid, so um, now I'm just gonna struggle to lose weight. And even if you do, it's because you, you brought it to yourself, just Mo saying. Most likely, unless you were like born without a thyroid, you... Uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't think, think that's possible. possible. Um, yeah, you will not yeah. be alive. But I think that you know y your, your blind spots need to be shown to you by somebody who understands. If you are working with a coach, then that's where you go to the coach and say, hey, this is my observation. Um, and then they can take a look at what you've done and see if there are the blind spots or see where there's room for improvement or give you at least an understanding of why you are where you are. Or sometimes you're just simply lying to yourself and you didn't do the best that you could be doing. Right. Those so, are the like three so, possible solutions or outcomes. Yeah. And sometimes you need to give it more time. Mm -hmm. Just because the scale didn't move in four weeks, that if you really showed up, if you're following a good plan, and if you're holding yourself accountable and you're being held to account, and you're being communicative in a sense that you're being held to account, right? It is your responsibility to be held to account. And the, the first person who needs to hold your, yourself to account is you because you live with yourself. And then be in communication with somebody that you trust to hold you to account. I love this. The exact but, quote of my wife from Daisy. Oh my God, your ass is as hard as a rock. The scale don't tell you that shit. The scale also doesn't tell you how stressed you are. The scale also doesn't tell you how uh, much lack of sleep you have. Uh, the scale also doesn't tell you uh, you missed uh, four workouts this week. Yeah. You have, you have to be gentle with yourself, but you have to be hard with yourself at the same time. It's a 
fine line. Because do you think Aaron and I, every single month, are expecting the scale to go down? No. We're not. Well, our goals are also different. In fairness to... People, yes. People but my right. point is, is that if, if you are showing up, like we are showing up, with consistency... And you're not seeing the scale go down. That doesn't mean that you're that you are not making progress. Like for example, for me, the scale didn't go down. But for anybody who's following the raw exclusive programming, we just finished a, a twelve week. Um, well, we're finishing up a twelve week strength cycle. We're entering deload week. But last week was test week. I increased my my lifts by fifty five pounds. The scale didn't go down. So don't always expect the scale to go down. That's for the consistent people. For the people who are inconsistent. And for the people who have weight to lose. Yeah. Right? Like if you have, if let's say, I, I say this, like if you're 300 pounds, you should lose weight. Yes. The weight should go down. Like without a doubt. It doesn't matter how, you, there's no way you can gain as much muscle as fat you can lose with that amount of body weight. Hmm. And if you're, you know, 170 pounds and you're like five, seven, and you're not that far from your goal, you're not gonna lose weight as fast. So there might be some weeks, the scale doesn't necessarily drop, but it's like the, how much weight do I have to lose to muscle I could even possibly gain ratio? A lot of people are like, oh, the scale didn't move. Oh, but it's muscle. Maybe. But if, if you have, if your goal is here and you have this much weight to lose, there's no way you can gain that amount of muscle that's going to like, oh, I didn't, I didn't lose any weight because I gained muscle. Yeah, that's, I feel like that's a lot of people just... Talking BS. And also, can I say one thing about the weight of muscle and the weight of fat? Yeah. I'm going to say this. This is just a pet peeve of mine. Um, but if you have a pound of muscle and a pound of fat, how much does it weigh? One fucking pound. For everybody who thinks that muscle <laughs> weighs more than fat. Muscle, mass is mass. Muscle is more dense, which means the weight of it takes up less space than the same amount of weight of it in fat. Amen. That makes sense? Muscle is more dense. It's solid. Exhibit A. Flex it. Exhibit. I don't know how to flex my right arm. It's the oh weird. Oh my god. Like here. She puts the fun in dysfunctional. Here. Okay. Okay. But, I wanna but answer it takes up very little space. But fat... On the other hand, like for the same amount of weight, takes up more space. I want to answer Daisy's question. What was Daisy's question? Well, your question. Because I think that this can like bring, bring a lot of perspective to a lot of people. So Daisy asked, do you expect to see the scale go up since you aim to gain muscle every week? For one, no, because here's the thing that you guys have to understand. We... We all, and you will know this after about, depending on your rate of consistency, if you're extremely consistent and you've reached your goal weight, you will figure this out within a year to two. If you're inconsistent, then you're never going to get there. Just saying. But if you're inconsistent, you need to find consistency. This is for the consistent people. Once your body reaches a certain weight and you will feel it in your body composition, you're not going to start increasing muscle, like gain 30 pounds of muscle. Because what you guys have to understand is that muscle is very energetically costly for the body. But that's also why when you have more muscle, you have a higher metabolism. Exactly. Which is why it's important to do strength and conditioning ex exercises to have a certain amount of muscle. However, your body's not going to keep on growing and growing and growing and growing. And also, if you think about it this way, like 
Mother Nature, at the age of 35, whether you like it or not, your body starts like degenerating muscle. So like ever since the age of 35 for muscle, if you just maintain that same amount of muscle between 35 and 40, you're actually improving. You're improving. That's why I always say too, like if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. So that's again, and I love these questions, Mm -hmm. And that's why you guys need to be coached because you are, you haven't experienced that level of experience yet, but there's only one way to get there. You need to have a, a bulletproof plan that works. You need to be held to account and you need to be consistent enough in order to get there. Like these are, these are like, um, waters bodies of water like that they, they you haven't even swam to yet you can all get there but you have to be consistent with where you're at stay in the step that you're in stop mm-hmm. worrying about the scale mm-hmm. be consistent with the plan and what and your action every single day mm-hmm. yeah and as far as muscle is concerned the rate at which a female can naturally put on muscle is very very low yeah it's very low like the amount of muscle you actually can gain within a year if you're consistent i mean it's different for everybody of course because our bodies are all different our genes are different um but it's 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 pounds like a small amount it's not like oh you can gain like i don't even think a, a female can gain 10 like more than 10 pounds within a year uh, of muscle, a, a intermediate to advanced mm-hmm. female. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you're new at anything, your body's going to be, is, is going to be more receptive to the changes that you're making. But as you go on with time and as you become more advanced and as you've been consistent for a longer period of time, the the you know personal bests the the records that you set the you know heavier weight that you lift the pounds of muscle you get those those um gains are so are tiny so incremental so like, tiny if if you talk to an olympic weightlifter um who competes at a high level who's been doing it for a very long time they will be ecstatic about a two and a half pound personal yeah. record. Yeah. If they lift just two and a half pounds, even a pound, I should be talking in kilos because I'm talking about Olympic weightlifting, they're all gonna so get mad at me. Um, yeah, if you lift even like a half a kilo more, you're like, it's a celebration. It's a fucking party. You slam the weight down and you fucking dance around in circles and you clap your hands a bunch of times. Like a, like a kid that just opened a Buzz Lightyear when Buzz Lightyear was new and cool. You gotta follow a system that measures consistency. The scale will never measure your consistency. You have to follow a system that measures consistency because the elites never measure their success based on the scale. Absolutely not. You know, let's talk about all the athletes that we interviewed so far, like Amanda Barnhart, um, like um, George Ann, like who else did we interview? Mooseburger. Like, yeah. Mooseburger. Like all their progress Cassidy is Lance. so, Cassidy Lance, like their progress is so like minute and tiny. Do you think they're not getting better? That's why it's a game of discipline and that's why you have to be consistent. And if you're like, oh my gosh, I've done well this week, but I haven't lost any weight, shut the fuck up and keep going. Like, you're inexperienced, just keep going. It's only 28 days. Like, four weeks is only 28 days. So, like, if you're like, okay, I've been consistent, but the scale isn't moving, there's two things that you have to check. You either need to check your plan. If you don't have a plan or you're not being held to account, then that's where the problem begins. You have too many blind spots and you're probably consistent at being inconsistent. Just saying. But if you're, if you're following a plan that works and you're like, okay, it's been four weeks and I haven't lost any weight, dude, just fucking give it more time. 
Give it more fucking time. Change, your body takes a long time to create changes, right? Like, let's say you drink like an asshole on Saturday. It takes you until Tuesday to recover. What makes you think that if you ate clean for one day, you're gonna drop five pounds in one day? Like, it's mind blowing, like how this weight loss industry, how it's brainwashed you and how you believe this bullshit. Drives me nuts. It, but it it's all right because I I'll, used to be there. I, it drives me nuts that you are being dis that so many people are okay deceiving you. That's where Sarit's passion comes from. And what pisses me off too is that let's say you had twenty eight days, the, the, you showed up and you were good, and you're like this kill didn't go down. Now it's like you start doubting yourself. You're like, okay, maybe I need to start doing keto or intermittent fasting. No. You need to follow the same fucking approach. Be consistent. The same unless, boring ass unless, approach. Unless, unless, if you're not being coached, it's completely understandable oh, yeah. why you you're would just question gonna, yourself. Right, right. And that's why we yo-yo. That's why we flip-flop back and forth. Like Everybody needs to be coached. Yes. In my opinion, by us. If you want but better results, then you need to be coached. In anything. It we want better yeah. results for how we perform. We have coaches. We want our business to grow. We want more people to know the, the answer, the truth, the solutions. We need to be coached. And we have to pay for those coaches. We have to pay for the coaches that have proven in good times and in bad times to have been consistent within their own business or their own self-development. Mm -hmm. So we can trust. With whatever goal you're seeking. So then you can actually trust the instruction being taken. So that when those moments do occur, like not necessarily dropping weight on the scale or noticing any difference, then you can trust and stay consistent better. I'm going to give you the answer right now. I'm going to give you the one mindset that is going to take you anywhere you want to go. The destination is in the journey. Mm -hmm. It's not a 30 day thing. Didn't Magic so, Johnson say that too, my man? And, and a lot of people have said that. Magic Johnson's and, awesome. And so if you are focusing on reaching a destination, I think that you'll be pretty disappointed most of the time. Because once you reach something, as a human being and human nature is to desire to improve in order to feel fulfilled, to do something better, to be bigger, to grow, to evolve, to have a purpose. And I think, where were you at? We were talking about it and you said something that made me think of the Lucky Charms commercial. I think it was one of the Inner Circle Morning videos where I was like, you'll never catch yeah, me was, Lucky Charms. I think it was Saturdays. Because the pot of gold keeps moving. Mm -hmm. You will never catch me Lucky Charms. And anytime I say something that a 12 year old would say, can you guys hashtag I'm 12? Because <laughs> I started doing it. And I think it's funny. Like when I said 69, ha ha ha, she said 69, hashtag I'm 12. And that's okay. Um, but that is the mindset. This is forever. My mission is forever. My journey will be for the rest of my life. I will be forever on this journey until I die. That doesn't mean that you'll always be struggling to achieve something that you once wanted, but that means once you achieve it, there's more. Yep. Precisely right. So don't get discouraged if let's say you're, you've done well for four weeks and you're like, the, the, the scale didn't move. In fact, you should ask yourself, why is this happening? Could be happening because maybe there's blind spots that you, you haven't held yourself to account in all ways. So there's things you can clean up because remember, the more advanced you get, the more likely you are to plateau. Mm -hmm. That's just how it works. Mm -hmm. That's why if you're doing the burn zone, every workout is different. Why are we doing this? Because we're fighting against Adaptation. plateau. Your body, remember, your body was meant to survive. Your body has mastered one thing and one thing only, and it's called survival. And adaptation is what led us to survival. So 
you know, if the scale plateaus, you need to ask yourself why and find out whether there's really no change happening because for as long as you're being consistent, change is happening every day. You every might, day. You might just not be able to see it. You might not be able to see it on the scale. So you have to look at all these other parts. And that's why if you're in the inner circle, you have the bi-weekly. And now I'm going to call out all the inner circle who, people who haven't sent in their bi-weekly. I think <clears throat> only like 15% of y'all did that. Uh -oh. How are you holding yourself to account? Don't you dare tell me all the scale hasn't moved. Are you being held to account? Look, you're you are responsible for your fucking success. Oh, you're in trouble. Ooh. You are responsible for your success. And for those who did, congratulations for showing up. It takes you five minutes to respond. Five minutes. How you do anything is how you do everything. I will show you the light. I will give you the light. But you have to hold yourself to account. That I do everything that I can every single day to show up as the best version of myself. If no, then don't fucking blame the scale. Stop getting emotional when the scale shows you the same number or even if the number goes up. I stepped on the scale the other day. I'm up two pounds. Whatever. Like I don't, I disregard that shit because I know I hold myself to account each and every day by following my targets. And I know that shit's out of my control and maybe it's muscle, but it doesn't matter. So I'm curious. The know. reason why people are attached to the scale is because you know that you're yet misaligned with the body that you want to have. So if the scale shows you a number that you don't like to see, you're upset about it because it's like a reminder, you're misaligned. There's only one way to change that. To keep showing up. You will get there for as long as you keep showing up. It, it's not going to happen in 30 days. It's going to happen a thousand days from now. What if I told you that? Yeah. I'm just curious to know mm -hmm. if you don't care about your weight. Mm -hmm. And this is a legitimate question, not a passive aggressive asshole -y question. Mm -hmm. Why do you weigh yourself? Accountability. For what? Check in with myself. Okay. So if you weigh more, what does that tell you? That I have more mass. So how does that um, fulfill your check-in? What information does that give you? If, if the scale will vary up or down a couple of pounds on a daily basis. Th then that's when I get to ask myself questions. Like, have you been checking in with yourself every single day? Have you had extra nuts in your salad over the past seven days? But if you know what you're doing and you know that it's right, do you need to weigh yourself? No. I ask because I weigh myself too and I also think the same as you. It doesn't matter. So it's, I ask It's myself, accountability. I ask myself, why do I weigh myself honestly if I actually don't? If, if, if I take that information and I'm like, hmm. It's accountability. I'll also tell you something else. Like when there is a change in seasons, I always look at my, like I, I, at my smallest jean shorts and see how they fit. Why? For accountability. D did, did I get thicker <laughs> either in my thighs or in my waist, you know, over the winter? I always do that shit. I stand in front of the mirror and I do this. Do more things shake than you used to because shake? Because change Hey, give them a second to laugh. That was funny. Sorry. Oh my gosh. If there were a way to steal thunder, Sarit has the power. <sighs> Sorry. Go for it. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> it's, you got to check in with yourself all the time. So me, like when it's, when, when it starts to get warm out in San Diego, right? And I, and it's time to wear these, I'm not talking about the Lululemon shorts because that shit's elastic. I'm talking, I'm talking about like the, the, the smallest pair of jeans shorts that I have. I think I folded How them the other day and I literally held them up and I was like, are these toddler <laughs> shorts? They're tiny. And I check zero? in with myself. Yes, they're zero. I check in with myself I'm like, even... and I'm like, does it fit? I have to, right? Like to make sure that my measurements are the same. How are you such a meatball and you still fit into a size zero? 
I feel like I'm, because not, for I'm me, not even fat, but I have to wear like a four. Thick. Wide. But you have to hold yourself to account, like all the time. And the scale it is just one way to hold yourself to account. But once, once your body has, has reached a place that it's happy in, you will know because it will be very hard to create change. And that's why for any girls who look extremely, extremely super duper muscular, not like me, I'm muscular, but I'm not super duper muscular. Like, you know what I'm talking about. Like that's, the idea that's, that, that's, a, that's a, a, um, an idea, like a preference. Super muscular is an opinion. It is it's definitely an opinion, but I think most people, when, when I say super duper muscular, like I want you to think about like those massive ass, like bodybuilders. Like the, like people will say, oh, you put a woman's head on a, a man's body, like to our bodies, but it's like, no, legitimately looks like a dude's body. Like not naturally yeah. Like the size a female could even ever attain without added hormonal supplementation. Yeah, and to keep on incre like back to Daisy's question, like injected you know, via if buttocks. you if you're like uh, let's say you're a female and you're like I gained fifty pounds of muscle this year. No, your body. Are you a female? Your your body does not want that. So like if there is situations like that or you hear people talk about that they're not natural you guys they're not there's actually a lot of women there's a lot of women who are not natural that in this industry that you would really think sad are. and it's here's why it's really sad because i don't care how you live your life honestly like if you want to put shit in your body you want to stay clean for us, the way we coach, we coach you to your success from a holistic standpoint. And my um, subjection or opinion, my lack of support oh. for body enhancing drugs is because it fucks up with your liver. And I'm like, what's the point of, for one, Gaining all this muscle, if you can't keep it without taking it, mm -hmm. that's a sign of lack of sustainability. And for, for two, what does that do to my liver? Right. And if my liver is not working at an optimal <clears throat> rate, then how does that sacrifice <clears throat> my life? I've, in my journey, I've been offered a lot of things by a lot of people. They're like, wow, like you look this way. You're so symmetrical, so natural. Like, what if you start taking this? Imagine where you can go. But I'm like, what is it going to, how it, for one, how sustainable is it? For two, how is it going to affect me 50 years from now? I want to share a story. Go for it. Unless you have more to say. I'm going to cut you off. So I just want to make a point with regards to leanness. What kind of leanness are you striving for? Mm-hmm. And what kind of leanness inspires you and how does that align with the, your core values? Would I like to be leaner? Yes. Does it align with my core values? No. The way in which you would get there doesn't align with your core values. Because yeah. there's only so much we're capable of. Yeah, that, your body's going to reach a point that it's at a happy place. And yes, you can get boosters, but this booster is not in alignment with my core values. Now, I'm not saying that if you're like 25% body fat, then, hey, you've, you've got a long way to go. You know, if leanness is something that you're looking for. But if you're like standing naturally at like anywhere between 14 to 16% body fat, then... That's where your body wants to be. Like, that's why women who have less than 11% body fat don't get their period anymore. You guys, that's not natural. <laughs> like, naturally, we're meant to reproduce. And if you get yourself to a point where you can't reproduce, then that's a sign. Hey. I'm going to share something that a lot of yeah. people don't know about me. 
and which is crazy because I think this is the most amount of people we've had in live. And I'm gonna share this uh, part of me that I, I would say I, I'm not uh, I'm not proud of, but I'm I'm I have no regrets because mm -hmm. I truly believe that everything that happens in life brings you to where you are and if you're happy with where you are you only should have gratitude for even the hard times or even the maybe difficult uh, or mistakes that you made um and i the purpose of me sharing this with you is to understand that it is so damaging to compare yourself to other women especially the way we will naturally compare ourselves, which is how good am I doing in comparison to them versus how good am I doing in comparison to me of yesterday or the day before or the week before. And so I want you to know this from me so that you understand the credibility I have in saying that more women than you believe are taking synthetic hormonal supplements that are getting them the body that they have. And then that, those are the bodies we're comparing ourselves to, which are not naturally achievable. I, at a point in my life, tried experimenting with different steroids. I have no shame in that because I know who I am today and I know that my core values have changed over time. However, what I do know is if that's, if what I was capable of at that time is what I was capable at that time with the amount of work I was putting in at the same time, with the amount of effort I was putting in at the same time, with how consistent I was being at the same time, there is no possible way that some of these women who are capable of what they're capable of or look the way that they do are doing it naturally. I'm not saying that every single one of them is on something. But what I'm saying is that it is completely unrealistic for you to compare yourself mm -hmm. to somebody when you don't know their circumstances. You don't know how long they've been doing it. You don't know what other things they're doing. Um, you know, you don't know how, you don't know uh, the maturity of their muscular structure. Now over time, like Sarit is, Sarit is like jacked, right? And just by looking at her, you could make an assessment of whatever kind you want. But at the same time, you have to know that the longer you are consistent, the more muscle maturity you have. So if I see a girl who's like freaking in her like early 20s, you simply don't have enough time lifting weights. If she's like, looks like a fucking superhero, and not just in leanness so that you can see the muscle, but in size. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, that's just not a thing. That's not a thing. I know from experience that naturally there's a 99% chance you didn't achieve that naturally. And I want you to avoid comparing yourself to people you don't know what their circumstances are. You know, I just want to... It's also why I can grow a beard better than my younger brother. Like, it fucks some shit up for me, guys. That is, like, unreversible. So I live with, with the consequences. But I will never touch it again. You know? But at the same time, it's given me now, like, some other street knowledge to have in my toolbox. And yeah. that's the benefit that I get from that, for I guess. Sure. Right? For sure. No, no regrets whatsoever. But I want to touch on another point because we talked about the importance of being coached. You need to be coached because you need to follow a plan that works. However, can I say one more thing? Yeah, go for it. Also, what had happened, I noticed, is that I started to become dependent. Yes. I started to become dependent on it thinking that if I didn't take it, I wasn't going to get the same results and then I would get fat. Because if you don't keep taking that shit, you don't get to keep the results. That's how those things work. If you don't keep, that's why you see bodybuilders go from shredded to like beer belly and, and soft as hell. Yeah, that's why when I see those girls on Instagram with like veins popping out of their abs, I'm like, you're on shit, dude. And, you, and it's not you, sustainable. You can, say, you can say there is a really good 
possibility you're on shit, but we cannot make an right. assumption. You're right. But Thank we you. can say, look, based off of my knowledge of what I was doing at the same time and how much hard work and effort and time and consistency I was putting in and still not achieving what you've achieved, like, I, have, I get some questions. I don't want to compare myself to something I don't know. Yeah. But, but the dependency then is the other factor of that. Is like, if you're doing something unsustainable, is it worth it? And I want to talk about the concept of, so you need to follow a plan that works. Okay. I'm just going to do a quick recap. I'm going to say one more thing and then let's close this off. If you want to get better results fa faster, you have to be willing to sacrifice more, more time, more energy, more money. Full stop. Okay. You gotta, you gotta follow a plan that works proven to work. How other people have shown that they've created the change that they want to and the trajectory in which they're moving is sustainable. It's not just a before and after your before and after is up till today. What's going to happen one year from now? You got to fucking keep going, dude. Okay. You got to increase your consistency. This is a game of consistency. That is it. Full stop. End the story. And there's no end to the game. There's no end to the game. It's just, it's a game of consistency. That is why LeBron James, I want to give a huge shout out to the Lakers. And they just won last they, night. They won last night. But LeBron James is getting older. He's totally crushing it in the NBA. We know a little bit about him because our mentor is actually one of his coaches too. But LeBron James over the last five years has, has evolved so much because he's increased his level of commitment to the game and therefore he's more consistent. That's it. It's all mental. Being consistent is mental because you're not going to see a dramatic change every single day. Do you yep. think LeBron James wakes up every single day and he goes from shooting like, um, let's say like I'll, I'll 100 this, three pointers to like 102? That's massive increase. I was, I was going to say, I'll take this because I was the one that played basketball. But it's like if you go one game shooting, um, you know, let, let, your average doesn't go from, uh, you know, 25 points a game to 40 points a game. Yeah. No. And same goes to the Olympic lifter or, you know, Usain Bolt. A 0 0.02 mm -hmm. increase in his 50 meter race is massive. So it's all incremental and that's why it's a game of consistency because of the incremental change. It's not a drastic change. But if you want it to be more drastic, then you need to be more consistent more often, which will require you to sacrifice more. And you've got to follow a plan that works. And then you've got to be held to account because let's face it, we all need to be held to account. Because when you're held to account, there's a deadline. With no deadlines... We just mosey along. There's never a sense of urgency. Let's talk about, you know, the sense of urgency with regards to the raw transformation. The reason why on the last day of registration. The last two days, like 30 people, more than 30 people, I think, registered in the last two days. Because the human brain shows up when there is a sense of urgency. <laughs> How do you create that urgency each and every day? That's another topic. That's another topic. Ooh, inner circle. We're going to talk about that tonight, actually. But that's why it's all really important. Like, what plan are you following? Who are you being led by? Because here's the thing. I'm not saying that we're the greatest coaches in the world, though I do know that we are here to change the world. We're very different. Because our mission is huge, and we have the truth that everybody needs to hear. But, you know, in this weight loss and fitness industry, for one, right now, the most sought out people are like pro athletes. But here's the thing. Pro athletes live very differently than you. They have a different set of goals. Their goals are performance based and your goals are aesthetic and longevity based and that's what people don't understand like a lot of them take shit 
I'm not saying that all of them do. A lot of them follow a plan that is so freaking strict that's not sustainable with your lifestyle. And that's why it's really important. Like, who is it that you choose to, fo to follow? It, do they have a set of core values for one? And if so, is that set of core values aligned with your set of core values? And I believe that right now we have 72 people live because you, your subconscious knows even if you don't have a you you don't have a predetermined set of core values because most people don't that your core values are aligned with our core values how do you know that you agree with what we have to say and therefore you choose to listen to us which we're so incredibly grateful for but you have to choose very carefully who it is that you listen to because who you listen to you become who you listen to you believe so are you listening to the truth or are you listening to, by the end of the day, it's all opinions. Like what I'm telling you, that's the truth is a predetermined set of opinions from my own struggles and experiences. Is that the only way that works? I don't know. Will I want to go on another way? No. Why? Because it works for me. And it works for my set of core values. If somebody was to tell me, sir, you're going to drop from 16% body fat to 5% body fat, but, and you're going to start having veins in your abs, um, which sounds really cool, but you're going to fuck up your liver and you're going to live 10, like 10 years shorter. No, I'm not going to take that. What's the point? So remember, it's all about what it is that you stand for by the end of the day. And that's all I've got. Uh, it's never all we got, but right. until next time. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are watching this on YouTube, please smash the subscribe button and use your fancy thumb to hit the notification bell so you can see when we drop new content. And also, you can check us out on the website, com for new things that we have going on. And what else? Oh, I saw there were 85 people on this live, which... I think is the most we've ever had live, but I want to get that shit to a hundred. Yeah. Let's get, 100. To, let's get to three so figures. So that requires, look, we do this for free, but if there were a price, the price to pay is to share, to share this. It's cost you nothing, but two seconds to click some names of people that you think will benefit from this. Um, we literally have discovered this weekend how many lives this truly is changing and saving. And it just, it blows our mind and, and we're so grateful, but let's get more people to hear about it and, and share and share and share the love. Yes, raw day one. For those of you guys who are starting the fourth round of the Raw Transformation, happy day one. We will see you later today at 2 p.m. Pacific, Inner Circle. We will see you guys at 5 p.m. PST. For the rest of y'all, we will see you tomorrow, tomorrow. 6.30, Q&A day. You got questions? Drop them. We'll answer them. Bye. Have a great day, you guys.